Morning. This is Arnie Waters here at Waters Capital in Boston, Massachusetts. Hope you're having a fantastic day to start out. At least you're breathing in and out. There are a couple of commentaries. Gold trading, of course, in the range we predicted, the 1650, 1660 level. It's going to be very difficult to ascertain any direction over the next week or 10 days. We're encouraging you to stay long. And we gave you a long technical report on why we think we should stay long yesterday. So check out yesterday's video uh, with producer prices uh, showing down but core inflation showing up. You might want to reflect on our yesterday's commentary relating to the fact that if inflation was calculated the way it was in 1990, it would be 6%. And if inflation today was calculated in the same basis as pre-1980, our inflation rate would be 11%. This is some of the reason that we're so sanguine about gold's prospects going forward. We're certain that there are going to be actual bankruptcies of sovereign states in Europe as well. This is obvious, uh, so I'm not going to belay. I'm not going to beat up on this point. Now, uh, Mr. George Soros, uh, many of you know, is uh, one of the most outstanding investors in terms of performance uh, and, and a big supporter of democracy throughout the world feels that class warfare has already begun in the United States. Uh, and this is something that we've reflected on occurring in Europe all, many, many times over the last few years. We talked about it in detail in France. Uh, we talked about it in detail in Italia. We talked about the underlying uh, class issue in England uh, that causes riots and whatnot and civil disturbances. Uh, in this country, uh, there are people who are deliberately setting out to uh, set up the haves against the have-nots in an overt way that has never been seen in the United States. I think people have always made a lot of money in the United States, and some people have made a lot of money and lived very well. Um, they tended not to flaunt that in the face of people who have not uh, had as much luck in terms of finance in their lives. That's not true anymore. People are overtly saying that if I've made some money, I'm entitled to keep it and shame on you because you're not able to be successful. Uh, this view of the world, while completely understandable, is extraordinarily dangerous in a country where uh, the commonality of being an American uh, has to be more important uh, than uh, special rules for the wealthy and a different set of rules for uh, people who are middle class. Uh, and so uh, we believe that there's a real danger, particularly going into this presidential election, uh, that the class warfare issue will be exacerbated. Um, and it's going to continue to be exacerbated as long as so many millions of Americans are unemployed. That unemployment is not okay. It's not all right. Um, and then, you know, we kind of talk about it as a number and things of this nature. Um, but even speaking with some of our clients who are extremely high net worth individuals, uh, all of those people, including me or commentator, have friends or relatives who are actually unemployed. People who have been working there most of their whole lives who are actually unemployed and have zero prospect of getting work in the view of your humble servant. Now, secondly, we're going to look a little bit at South Africa. Big strike, uh, Impala Platinum, uh, unauthorized strike, 5,000 uh, drill workers or whatever, the 5,000 workers uh, are, are on strike, a wildcat strike. Now, this is not surprising given the conditions under which miners in South Africa work. Um, so there's 5,000 people on strike, and Impala Platinum is losing 3,000 ounces of production every day. Um, but but I, I want to highlight this in the context that the ruling party, the ANC uh, in South Africa, has absolutely failed to deliver improved conditions to miners and other workers. Uh, and even though they have nationalized the mine, which of course completely turned into a failure, um, there, there doesn't seem to be any understanding on the part of the leadership of the ANC of how to work effectively with capital and capitalist institutions. And this failure, in our view, is deliberate um, because there are sectors in the ANC, and you will note we've criticized them roundly for the last few months uh, about their suppression of free speech. Uh, we think that South Africa is going to move in the direction of a dictatorship. Uh, you will doubtless recall our commentary that uh, the head of the secret police uh, is now the president of the country. The head of the ANC secret police is now the head of the country. 
uh, and we think that suppression of voices uh, is the first step on the road uh, to a dictatorship. Um, that dictatorship will uh, try to appropriate minds and do all kinds of other skullduggery that will have the effect of destroying South Africa. Um, I think a lot of this is going to immediately take place as soon as Nelson Mandela uh, departs this scene to another place. Uh, so this is Arnie Waters, aim for the ice flows, lay low, lay low, I mean, look for some direction. Uh, one of the things that, that I've learned over a long time of being in the investment business is sometimes it pays to lay low and, uh, and, and watch and wait and observe. Two troubling thoughts for the day, uh, secret plans to take over South Africa and uh, secret plans to take over South Africa and the, the uh, increase in class warfare in the United States. This is Arnie Waters, aim for the ice flows, not the open water. Have a great day. Bye-bye.